Next. Hi, everybody. So we are finally here. We're at our very, very first podcast, and I'm excited to be able to do this for you all. And I do have our very, very first special guest with us here today, uh, which is my dear friend, and her name is Amanda Sullivan. Um, Hi, so everyone. we're going to be going over a gist of information and stuff that I'm pretty sure that you guys are all very, very curious about um, and wanting to know like, hey, where's Heavenly at? She disappeared for like five years. Um, and I know a lot of you have been very, very curious about this, but I also genuinely want to tell my story as well. So Mandy here is going to be asking me a series of questions. We're going to have some in-depth conversations um, about everything that was pretty much happening and going on. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so Heavenly, uh, let's think back to helping your audience. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Getting started is always like, t- like take off is yeah. always is always difficult. So, yeah. um, okay, let's just say, um, let's start at the beginning. Um, let's go back to the day before the worst day of your life. Oh, okay. So, I mean, this was like, back in 2020 so it's like 2024 now so it's been it's been how many years it's it's well four four years yeah over it's four been, years it's been four years so from what i remember is and just for everybody's reference when we use the word defendant or respondent um we are keeping the name of the other person concealed um out of respect um so when you hear me use those phrases um are she her uh, for those that have been following me long enough i'm pretty sure you're aware of who we're talking about, but we, we won't be using their names. Um, so as far as like, you know, January of 2020. So like, obviously I moved down to Oklahoma city in 2019. And that was after basically a really, really bad breakup. And then, you know, I found out like in February, several months after we broke up, but you know, she was pregnant and then there was a series of stuff that occurred. Um, which is basically, I mean, you know, you're obviously the attorney, so you could tell me if what I'm saying or the phrase that I'm using is correct, which was essentially using the child as far as like blackmail in a lot of different ways to get what she wanted done. Um, so, and of course that led to more and more issues as far as emotional, physical, uh, abuse. Um, but then if we go all the way back to January of 2020, you know, I remember, um, you know, she was like, Hey, you know, my mom wants to come over and spend time with us. Can we go up there and go pick her up? And I was just like, yeah, no, we can totally do that. And this was on January 25th of 2020. And, and how old was Malachi at the time? So he was three months old. Okay. Yeah. He was three months old at that time. So the, the gist of that scenario was like, Oh, okay. So you know, my son's mother is wanting her mom to come over to the house and spend time with us. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But then it was, you know, hey, can you, can we go over there and go pick her up? Yeah, that's fine. Because it was late in the afternoon and her mom does not drive late at night um, due to like eyesight issues. So we went over there, we picked her up and we went over to the house. And then later on that afternoon after we were watching, I think it was like, ancient aliens or something like you know like it was something like interesting that i was interested in but also that's something that her mom loved to watch too it was like ancient aliens and all different kinds of stuff and we were so everything walking. was good it was there wasn't yeah. any kind of tension or anything no weird no. feelings there wasn't any type of tension there wasn't any type of like awkwardness it was just you know malachi was in the room she was enjoying her time i made popcorn i remember doing that because i remember the smell of it and going back and forth between the kitchen and stuff and then i remember there was laundry that needed to be done and uh you know uh, malachi's mom had said like oh don't worry about it. i'll do laundry because i had work the next morning i had to be on the clock by 5 a.m and i didn't get off until 2 p.m um and so at that point in time like i'm like okay well it's 10 o'clock i need to go to bed so i went to bed and i just remember at that point thinking to myself like hmm something's not right like I felt like I should stay because I remember she had came into the room and she asked me why I was still awake and this was like almost at midnight and I was like I don't know I just have like a weird feeling I can't sleep blah 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 and this was after 
several weeks of me calling my mom and saying like, hey, this is what's happening in our relationship. This is what's going on with Malachi. I'm concerned, I'm worried, blah, 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 blah. Because I was constantly getting threatened. Like, if you don't, if you don't do, you know, what I'm needing you to do, like, you know, as far as like get a second job or this or that, it was, I'm going to leave with him. I'm going to, I'm going to leave with him. So that was a constant threat that I was getting most of the time. Um, but then as far as that consistently happening, I was just, you know, venting all this stuff to my mom and my grandparents. And my grandma was the only one that said, I'm concerned because she seems like she would do something like this. And so I remember I went to bed. I took like two melatonins because at the time I wasn't prescribed sleep medication like I am now. And um, I went to bed and then I woke up. My alarm was going off at like 345. So I was extremely tired because I had to have time to get up you know, brush my teeth when I had teeth (laughs) and then, um, get dressed, get ready, warm up the car because it's cold. It's January, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I remember her telling me like, Oh, you know, my mom has a dent, you know, a doctor's appointment and can we, can, you know, can I use the car to take her to a doctor's appointment? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know where the spare key is because, you know, my thought was, well, if you get in the car with me and then drop me off at work, you're going to need a key, but I have my own key because it also has my house key. Mm-hmm. So, um, kitty cat meowing, it's fine. Mm-hmm, sorry. Um, no, it's fine. And so, and then I remember like sitting there and, uh, that morning, You know, I got up, got ready and everything, and I was so tired. And the first thought in my head was like, you know, again, something just doesn't feel right. And I ended up getting dressed, getting ready, and I I went over to Malachi in his rocker. And as usual, every single morning, I always tell him, you know, Daddy loves you. I'll be home from work soon. And I tell him that every single morning, like whenever I would go to work. And I remember he was wrapped up in his little poo blanket. And he was sound asleep in his rocker. And I was like, okay. And I did a little bit. I found it a little weird because usually most mornings, like, he's usually, because we did co-sleeping, you know, usually she was in bed with him. But then that morning, they were both awake and he was already in his rocker. And he was mainly because, you know, I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, well, she has a doctor's appointment. So, of course, they're both going to be up. Malachi's already going to be getting ready and stuff with them or whatever. But I also thought to myself, it's really early in the morning. Um, And I remember I went out to the car and it was cold and I started the car and I was sitting there and I was like, you know, I'm going to be late. Like, you know, let's go. And then keep in mind, like for several months to several years, like there's emotional, physical abuse that's consistently happening. If there was any time that I was just like, I don't want to, you know, that's not me. That's not what I want to do. Like, you know, I can accept for the things that you want to do. Like, can you do me the favor and do the same? You know, it's like everything had to be her way. And so not to mention like the consistent drinking and stuff too, but you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then I remember she was walking out on this little sidewalk that we had at the front end of the house. And then she turned, she like turned around, went back inside And then came back out to the car, got in the car, and then we left. And I remember she, like, she put her hand on my leg, which was completely not normal. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, that is not normal. Like, that is something that just never happens. And then on our way there, she is telling me, like, oh, I love you so much. You're such a great father. You're such a great partner. And I'm, like, in my head going, like, am I about to die? Like, cause right. this is not normal. Like this is not normal. I'm used to being screamed and yelled at and being pushed around and consistent stuff. So I'm like, this is not normal. And keep in mind, she had never drove in my car ever. So when we got to my, my place of work, I had to show her how to use the headlights. I had to show her how to use the wipers. I had to show her like, you know, everything, like how to work the car. And I remember walking up on the sidewalk of the place that I was working about to go inside. And I remember turning around and I went to wave at her and she didn't wave back, but we made eye contact. So I was like, 
okay, well, maybe she just wasn't paying attention. She wanted to keep both of her hands on the world, you know, whatever. I was trying to make excuses because that mo moment I was being love bombed and didn't fully consciously understand like, oh, I'm being love bombed right now. Mm -hmm. Like this means that something is about to happen um, and I should be worried. And by the time I realized that, I remember it was 10 o'clock that morning and I went to my area manager and I was like, hey, I'm going to take my 15 minute break right now. And he was like, okay, is there any, is there something wrong? And I was like, no, 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 I just need to take my 15 minute. And he was like, okay. And I remember I was walking to the, the smoke hole that was out there at my job and I called her phone several times and there was like no answer at all. And then I remember I called her mom and her mom picked up on FaceTime. And from what I could see is like, she had like the phone down low and I could see like blue sky and clouds and then like the under part of her chin. And I was just like, Hey, you know, where, where is, you know, how's Malachi doing? How's his mom doing? Like, you know, I'm trying to get a hold of her. Mm -hmm. And then she tells me, she's like, she's never coming back. She wants nothing to do with you. Don't ever call us. Don't ever talk to us again. And I thought like she was joking because her mom had an intense, sometimes a very intense sense of humor. And I thought she was like joking, like she was messing with me. So I started like laughing and then her mom hung up on me and I was like, okay. So I, I texted Malachi's mom and I was just like, Hey, um, wh what's going on? Is your mom like effing with me is what I said directly mm -hmm. in the text message. And I got no response, like no response, nothing. And it was like, my messages were going, they were being delivered, but she was not reading anything. Like it was just like silence. And I called my mom and I told my mom what was going on. My mom immediately was like, well, call the cops and see if anything's going on. And I was like, okay. So I called and they told me that uh, a young lady with her child had made a police uh, called the police for a civil standby saying that she was being harassed at her place of living and her son was being harassed and that they were the only ones that lived there and that the vehicle that was there was her vehicle and i was like that the title is in my name and the lease agreement has my name and her name on it so even the cops when i told them i was like can you please meet me at the property and I can give you this documentation, they were hesitant to even meet with me because they knew that they had done something wrong. But then they had told me that she had reported to them that she wishes not to be found. So she had already gotten the police convinced that she was the victim and that she was going to take off with my car and then alienate me from her child. She had set this whole thing up. Oh yeah, no, it was planning it, it was, for yeah. And, and, how long. and then like, you know, I remember, um, I had, I went inside like frantically, like I was, I wasn't, I was like more in shock. Like I wasn't crying. I wasn't upset because at first I was just like, this can't be real. Like it's, it's whatever. And so a part of me was thinking like, yeah, she really did this. She really, really did this. And then the other part of me was just like, no, figure out what's going on. Give it a second, blah, 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 blah. And I remember I went inside and one of our witnesses on the case was Jennifer. And um, so I went inside, I went up to the service desk and I was like, hey, can you do me a favor? And she's like, what? I was like, I need you to take me home, like right now. She's like, well, where's your car? And I was like, well, you know, my son's mom has the car. And she was like, okay. And, I, and then I told her briefly what the cops had told me. And she was just like, okay, give me a second. Let me go tell my boss. And then I ran to the back, went and told HR what was going on. They were like, okay, well, you need to file for a leave. If you think that you're not going to be able to make it back to work, you need to file for a leave. And I was like, okay. So I did that later on that night. But then I remember like Jennifer, she like took her 30 minute break and we got in her car and I showed her how to get to the house. And whenever I got there, the screen door was open. The front door was open. His room was completely destroyed. Um, all of his clothes, all the, the clothes, the diapers and everything that I paid for was gone. Um, all of the toys were gone. Um, the, some of the furniture, like a rocking chair, all of it, it was gone, like completely gone. And I kept, you know, walking through the house. Cause it was like, when you walk into the front door, there's Malachi's room, 
then the bathroom is one bathroom with two connecting doors and then there's our room and then there's the living room the dining room living room and then through a hallway is the kitchen so I literally walked around the house in a complete circle like three times. And Jennifer is like trying to catch up to me because, you know, she's like five, three. And mm. she sees that I'm fully panicking at this point. Right. And then my mom calls and I answer it. And at that moment, it was like I couldn't like complete shock. So I collapsed in, in the dining room and Jennifer was, you know, on her knees trying to comfort me. And my mom's like, what's going on? What's going on? And all I'm doing is staring at the front door, screaming with full blown tears. Like she took my baby, like she took my son. And so it was like, at that moment, I felt like I had witnessed murder, but it was like worse than that because it was your, it's your child, right? Like no, there was just a void on top of like the trauma. Yeah. So do you think she like purposely like destroyed the apartment too, to hurt you? Like, did yeah, she, like no, she trashed um, it also, didn't yeah. she? Like she was because the the housing agency that we went through they did a, a, like they they sued us and they they sued us via an alias so like there was eight hundred and fifty dollars worth of damage to the house that so she did the day she took malachi yes and so and you know and as a result of all of that too is like you know i had called the housing uh, apartment complex and i you know i told them i was like hey I'm having issues in my relationship. This is what's going on. So they were perfectly aware, you know, of everything that happened. And they still, they, they still turned around and sued both of us. <laughs> so, and it was just like, Hey, like this wasn't my fault. Like, yeah. you know, I didn't do this. And then, you know, I remember sitting there that night, I called two of my best friends, uh, which are, uh, one of them was the, the mother of my godchildren. And that would be Jasmine and Jillian, both of both of them are sisters. And I called them and they were like, they saw like how destroyed I was. And they were just like, what's going on? And I told them and they were like, okay, so what do you want to do? And I was like, I told them, I was like, well, one, I'm afraid for my life because of her stepfather, um, because, you know, the comments that he had made about like protecting his daughter and stuff like that. And then of course, like some of the lies that she had told them, they were in their completely different, mm -hmm. you know, perception right. of things. So I was already the villain to them, no matter what I could show, say, or whatever. Um, but then also me being told, Hey, if you tell my family this, I'm going to, I'm going to leave with him. Like it's a constant cycle of abuse. It never ended. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I remember that night I paid like, it was $109 for a lift to drive me from Oklahoma City to Tulsa back to my grandparents' house. And then on in February, I immediately got like a budget truck and went down to the house with Jillian, David, and my mom. And we packed the entire house in one day and left because I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, well, right. <laughs> like well, and going back to... um malachi's mom's family like were they pressuring you you know you're a transgender yeah so parent and and that's that's the crazy part too is like for you know those audience members that know is that for you know the several years that me and his mom were together um i was presenting as female i was on hrt i was doing makeup videos i had long hair i was actively presenting as a female mm -hmm. and it was like the dynamic completely changed like so as soon as like I was put in a position where I was taken away from my support system my family and my friends and then I was basically housed with my abuser full time where I had no support from anybody else um at that point it was like the drilling and slight conditioning of things that were like, you know, belligerently just like, you know, you should be ashamed of taking your child's father from him because you want to be a woman. You know, I mean, it was a consistent thing, you know? Uh, and then I remember uh, you had seen the video where I, I had posted a video saying how parenthood has changed my life. Mm -hmm. Right. And the thing is though, is it's like, it sucks because in a way, I was lying to my audience, but in another reality, I was convinced to feel like this is how it should be. So 
when I'm sitting there and I'm saying like, oh, you know, I want to be able to have my kid and pick up my kid from school and him not be made fun of because his father is now presenting as a female. Um, so I'm all of this information is being fed to me by my son's mom and her mom, her family. So it's like a consistent like beat down of stuff. And it's like I have videos of the baby shower that her her mom had put on over at her house. And you can see actively how uncomfortable I am because I decided to present female that day. And I showed up full clothing, female clothing, like street walker, basically, you know, like jeans, a t-shirt, you know, et cetera, looking as natural as possible. And you could tell just by hearing their voice, like how uncomfortable they were because they weren't ever comfortable with Malachi's mom being lesbian or bisexual, but then for them to see her with somebody that's identifying as a woman that's biologically male, it was like a bigger deal for them. So it, it just, it never really got better. It just felt like it got worse. And so at some point I was just like, okay, well, I'm not going to do this anymore. So, um, you know, I basically cut the rest of my hair off and started wearing, you know, wearing more masculine clothes. And keep in mind, 99.9% .9 of my wardrobe was all feminine. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was like reshopping for a whole nother person, which is ridiculous, especially whenever you already have a child, like trying to detransition because of mental trauma and all this stuff. And then the financial struggle, because I'm the only one that's working. I was working two jobs, you know, at one point I was working five to two, three to 11. <laughs> so, you know, I mean. And trying to find time to spend with your newborn son. Yeah, consistently. And, and that was another thing too, is like, what was the tiebreaker was that I, you know, there was a letter in the mail. Um, and usually with Walmart, when you're employed with them, you go on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. You only get X amount of days, right? Well, in this situation, it's like, we're sitting here and I'm looking at a piece of mail that had already been opened. And I'm like, her leave ended two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know, her leave ended two months ago. And I'm sitting here going, hmm, so, okay. That explains the reason why now I'm being pressured to get another job, right? She had no intentions of going back. She had work. no intentions. She had every intention of uh, being a stay at home parent, which even in 2019 versus now, like an economy wise, is it's not logistic. Yeah. Right. It's it's just not. Unless you, you know, are you have some form of income to support that. But then at the same time, um, you know, I had confronted her about it and that caused a mass blow up. Like, I mean, really, really bad. About her going back to work yeah, to about, start yeah. contributing. And, you know, her thoughts were, well, that means I have to leave him with you and I don't feel comfortable. And I'm like, well, what is it that I ever did for you to feel like you can't leave my own biological son with me? Like, I've never done anything. Like, I come home at 11 o'clock and I'm awake until 1 a.m. in the morning just trying to spend time with him because I don't ever get any time. If I just went to work, came home, went to bed, I would never have a relationship with him to be in with. Well, in a way, she was already alienating you before she ever took him. Mm -hmm. You know, she was she was making it clear that she didn't. Yeah, she didn't want there to be a close bond. Well, and that two. that behavior was very prevalent too, because even when the arguments occurred about going up to Tulsa to visit my family, so they could spend time with their grandson and great grandson, was a challenge as well, and. It, that behavior was also prevalent with my family too, because like, you know, putting him down in like his bassinet or anything, if he even made like the slightest move, sound or anything, she had to go pick him up. She had to go and she wouldn't allow anybody else to soothe him. She wouldn't allow anybody else to bottle feed him. Like even knowing she was breastfeeding, um, you know, trying to, it bond with my own child and like bottle feed that was like a big no-no oh she wouldn't let you bottle feed him so the only time i could was when she was asleep 
So, her. yeah, so basically it was like I could only get away with doing so much when she was asleep in order to actually have any type of time with my child. Like, that's, I mean, the dynamic for three months after he was born, like... <laughs> yeah, well, and, you know, when I first got on the case, you were telling me about her behavior after Malachi was born, about the drinking and, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, how did... I just was so taken by your 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 strength and your mental um, toughness to survive this whole saga. But, you know, just in those three months, I can't imagine the, the mental anguish that you're going through, so. Um, I feel like at some point, if, you, if, you're, if you're a victim of domestic violence in any way, shape, or form, at some point, you, it's like living in a fog. It's like, it becomes your new normal, so you don't realize how much pain you're in until it's over like so for me like as soon as like i remember thinking to myself like she had left she took you know our son but then she also took my car so i'm thinking to myself I'm like i'm like you know what i don't care about the car if you would have left him i would have been perfectly fine take the car yeah just take the car <laughs> right. it, like you know take yourself take like, your car yeah give me back you know, that. and so i literally was thinking to myself i was just like I'm, I'm glad that she's gone because then I don't have to deal with it anymore because it was like playing a fine balance. It's like the best way that I could describe it was like living with a king cobra. Like you, when you're playing an instrument to make that cobra dance, it's because you're mimicking a behavior that that cobra wants. And as a result, if you stop playing or do it wrong, you can be bit. So it's like, it's like paying a fine line with stuff. So th the whole thing is just difficult. <laughs> like, and then he's gone. Uh huh. And what happens next? After you get home, back home to Tulsa, and you're still trying to find her and Malachi, what happens next? So I think next we're going to describe that probably in the next video okay uh, because there's a lot of information to this and i want to make sure this done properly so if you guys be patient wait the next episode will come out and you guys will be able to see everything um if there's any questions or concerns that you have please leave a comment please like and subscribe and uh manny will be back she's going to be like our main special guest for several episodes um and here soon in one of our episodes i'm going to be bringing my husband on um, and we're going to be talking about some stuff too. Um, so, and maybe you guys will get to see the baby bump at some point. <laughs> so anyways, so I love you guys and I will see you guys in the next video.